Now, welcome to another edition of Revealing God. I'm excited to be with you. We've been talking about spirit world, and we have to understand that of, from what we've been talking about this service, we've seen that the spirit world is a real world. Everything that was created in this year was made from a spiritual side by the spirit world. The spirit world was the first world before God created this physical world. And man was a go in between. God created man to have access both to the physical and to the spiritual and gave man dominion in the physical. We know that in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, God said, Let's make man in our image and our likeness. So man was created in the image and the likeness of God. Then man fell to sin, and we know where how we fell to sin because Satan had already rebelled against God and came to. It was banished to the hell. Hell was actually designed for Satan to stay before Jesus um, or God judges him. But he came to take over the dominion of man, stealing from man, man's dominion and of the head. And he started to wander the head. But Jesus came to overcome him and put him back to where he belongs, which is to cast him out of every place he has, you know, exalted himself. And has given man back the authority over Satan. He said, I have all power, which is authority over uh, uh, in heaven and earth belong to me. That was Jesus said. So all power in heaven and earth belong to him. He has the authority. So we as Christians have the authority. We understand that. But before we get to that, we have to understand that we also last week talked about the uh, gateways, which are gateways. We talk about altars as which are gateways. We read um, uh, in the Old Testament a part where we saw a ladder from heaven to head and angels descended and ascended and God was on top and was talking to I think it was um, Jacob and uh, what we see there is a picture of what an altar is an altar is a gateway between the physical and the spiritual so sacrifices are made and it opens portals and allows things from the spirit to easily enter the physical. And we talk about three temples. We talk about the temple of God in heaven. We show that from the scripture that it does exist and it has an altar. Every temple has an altar. We show that the early temple that was given to um, to the Israelites at that time had an altar in the most holy place. Then we talk about the woman temple, which we said quoted from the book of First uh, Corinthians chapter three. Uh, I think verse 16 says that we are the temple of God and the Holy Spirit dwells with us. So you, man was designed to be a temple of God, a place of worship in God. So we're designed as an object of worship, of worshippers of God. And that's why the Bible says, God is a spirit that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is a spirit. So that's why when man died and when he sinned against God, he died in spiritual death. And the Bible says in Genesis chapter 6 verse 3, man is now flesh, my spirit can almost strive with him, can almost relate with him. That's basically what he's saying. So man had lost his spiritual identity and had also lost a lot of things. He lost his dominion, lost a lot of things. One of the things that we are talking about, which is spiritual blessing, he lost his spiritual blessing. And that's what Jesus came to restore. So we're going to be talking about spiritual blessing, as I said, and we're going to be comparing with him why it's so important because the blessing you see, God, when God created man, even the animals, God had blessed them because without a blessing, they can't fulfill their purpose. They can't achieve, they can't increase, they can't multiply. So let's quickly read uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 22. It says, And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the sea, and let the fowls multiply in the earth. Then if you go to 28, it says, And God blessed them that's talking about Adam and Eve, and, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, be going to fly, and replenish, subdue, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowls of the air, and all and over everything living, every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So God blessed um, Adam and Eve, and He blessed the animals because you see the qualities and all the attributes of the blessing there. So the blessing does without it. Because man could have not been able to achieve his purpose upon the head. But when Adam and Eve sinned, the Bible says God, God reversed that blessing to a cause. Man had, was, you know, had lost his um, identity already. Already, when man sinned, 
he lost his glory. That's number one. He lost the glory and the honor of God. And that was the glory which was covering him, left him, and he was himself naked. Because one of the attributes of the cause is shame. So we're going to be seeing some of these attributes here. And we we'll see the attributes of the cause. So God, in Genesis chapter 3, was causing, if you look at what the Bible says in verse, verse 14, he says, And the Lord said, God said unto the serpent, Because thou art done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above all every beast on the, of the field. Upon thy belly shall thou go, and dust shall thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between the seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise thy heel. Then he said, Upon the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrows, thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. So we see what all the effects of the cause. And it says, And unto Adam he said, Because of thou art hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and had eaten of the tree of which I command thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cause is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of a life. But we, if we look, go back down, God, God, God because seeing destruction, poverty, and life that come into the earth. And when you look at what the Bible says in Genesis chapter 9, in verse 1, And God blessed Noah and his son, and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the head. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon the beast of the earth and upon every fowl of the air, upon all the all that moved upon the earth and upon all the fish of the sea into your hand are they delivered. So let me just cut this short there. But if you understand what has happened there, if you compare this Genesis chapter to 9, when God was blessing Noah, because God had destroyed all of man, and there was only Noah and his children that was left, and his children's wife, and his own wife. And if you look at what the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, he blessed Adam. He said, Good, if the Bible said, Be fruitful, number one, and you see the same quality here in verse um, when it was blessing Noah, I say, Be fruitful. So he told Adam, uh, Noah the same thing, Be fruitful. He told Adam multiply. He, he told uh, Noah multiply. He said replenish the earth to Adam and Eve. And he told uh, Noah and his, his family also replenish the earth. But now he gave, he gave Adam, he said to Adam, subdue and have dominion. But that he did not tell Noah because they could not do that because they were socially dead. Right? I said the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every other beast and animals upon the field. But Adam and Eve said, subdue, have dominion. What is subduing? Put everything under your control. Have victory over the power of darkness. Have victory over everything. They are under your control. You rule over them. So have dominion is to rule over the in this earth. And to have a Noah, he did not say that because it is not possible for them to be able to do that because they were spiritually dead. They were just bodies that had a soul, but they did not have the dominion they needed from God. Because the dominion comes from having, you know, having the Spirit of God with you, having the Spirit of God in your as a nature. That's when you have dominion, the ultimate dominion over the powers of darkness. Because that what Jesus came to do. When he came to the world, he showed dominion over the principality and powers. Because the Bible says, wrestling against flesh of love, against principality, against powers, against rulers, darkness, and spiritual wickedness in high places. We are fighting a battle, a spiritual battle. You cannot defeat spiritual, the devil, with physical means. The war, weapon of warfare are not kind are not physical. So we don't fight the devil with physical means. We can only have dominion over the Satan through the name of Jesus, through spiritual means. And that's to be in Jesus Christ. And when the Bible says, as many as receive receive Jesus as he given the authority, the power to be called the sons of God. So when you get born again, that's why I say born, born again, people that not understand the term born again or they've never accepted Jesus into the life of the Lord and Savior, they can't have authority over Satan. Because the Bible says, these signs shall follow them that believe in his name, they shall cast out devils. 
and they speak in new tongues, they will touch daily things, they will, it shall not all them, the old serpents, you know, all them, I even rather be, rather than be sick, they'll be the healer, they'll be laying hands on people and they'll be sick, they'll be healed. So we have to understand that it is important you get born again to have dominion over the powers of Satan. Now, I talk about no blessing and the cause. We're talking about spiritual blessings here. Spiritual blessings comes. God, we have to understand what the blessing is. The blessing is um, a, the, a spiritual force that attracts goodness to the person's life. And when you talk about cause, you talk about a, another spiritual force that attracts evil, continuous evil to someone's life. So if a person is experiencing continuous evil in his life, uh, you have a second of one kind of problem from one generation to another. There is a, probably a cause in that family. Somebody causing death, one person dying, the next year dying, or there, there are limitations. People don't, at the, when they get to 40, they die, or when they're certain age, they die. Or when they, grow, they, they rise up and they, they fall. Because when God blessed Adam and Eve, the Bible said, He said, be fruitful and multiply it, not increase. So the blessing always brings increase. And the Bible says, the light of rejoice is as shining like that, shining brighter and brighter onto the perfect day. So we have to understand that one attribute, one major attribute of the blessing is increase. So having to understand that the blessing and there's a cause. The blessing is backed up by God, the forces of heaven. Angelic forces. When a man is blessed, he has the backing of God with him to ensure that he prospers in all that he does. He prospers, he multiplies, is fruitful, has dominion, has rule, and has protection from all. We saw that in, in um, Job. Job, the Bible, when the devil was, was reporting Job to God, he said, Look at he ha, you have protected him with an hedge of fire around all he has, and you have blessed all the works of his hand. So we understand this divine protection for any man that is, you know, walking with God, that is blessed of God, and he has divine protection over all that he has, and he has, it can increase. Because if, if no matter how you labor and you work, and when the devil is there, there's a gateway of Satan to be there into your life, it brings in causes. Causes op- uh, sometimes open through portals or uh, altars, or, which create portals, real portals, into the people's lives. So as a Christian, we have to understand that when you are blessed, you are, cannot be affected by causes. Rather, you see that when God was blessing Adam, uh, Abraham, God said, anyone that blesses you will bless. Anyone that causes you will be caused. And that in Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. So that means the cause cannot come upon you. You saw in the book of Numbers, the Bible t- tells us how, that's 22 to 24, how Balaam was was a cost trying to was you know hired to cost the people of Israel. He tried to cause them several times. He raised an altar. He told them to raise an altar, made sacrifices, and when any time would proclaim, because if he had been able to cost them, because the God had never given. I, be, I believe Balaam was a prophet of God from another nation at that time. Many would believe that he was just a false prophet. It was yes, you can tell me a first prophet because but, but because God but it was it was a prophet, but out of covetousness he became wanted to do something bad. There are people like that they are actually called by God, but because of filter law, because of setting greed and loss, they disobey God and want to do the wrong thing. They've been bestowed authority, they've been given powers, spiritual powers. To do certain things, but they can abuse those powers. You can abuse us with authority, and that was Balaam was about to do. It was actually when he saw that God wanted to bless Israel, the Bible said he did not want to consult with God again, but he wanted to went on his own to try to cause them, but he could not. God ensured that he could not cause them, and he, he had to tell those that had him that was Balaam and say that I, I cannot cause these people. It's only what God tells me. I, that I can say. So we have to understand that a man, a person that is blessed cannot be caught. You are only caught when you break God's law, when you open gateway with your own heart. You, can, you alone can allow causes come into your life. But without you, causes cannot come to your life when you are truly a Christian walking under the blessings. And when we're explaining further while Christian, because every Christian that is born again is actually a descendant of Abraham. And the Bible says, we are redeemed from the cause of the Lord. Christ has made a cause for us. Well, it's written, cause to everyone that I'm going to tree that the blessing of Abraham might come upon us. 
um, that's gender through faith. I'm receive the problem of the spirit through faith. So we must understand that anyone that is born again is able to tap into the blessings. But we still have to understand how to do it. And that's where many Christians fail to understand. So, but let me talk about the attribute of the blessing. We look at one attribute because we see all the attributes written in Genesis chapter six, uh, chapter one, chapter two, and we see the causes in chapter three. And some major attributes of the causes. One of them is he said be fruitful. Fruitfulness talk about results, having results. With the, when you are, you are not having results, that is a sign of a cause. You're trying to do labor and you find that you, your, your labor produces no result. That is a sign of a cause. We see in Genesis chapter 3, it says, it says labor and the earth will not yield its yield you fruit because of the cause. But in order to bless them, be fruitful. That means you bring results. Then it talks about multiplying. One aspect of the blessing is to multiply. That's to increase. So as a man that is blessed will always continue to increase. The Bible says when um, Job was a blessed man, the Bible says when at the latter end of Job was more blessed than his former. He had double of all that he lost because he had a, a trying time. But God blessed Job, the Bible says, and he gave him double of all he had. So the blessing always does increase. Remember when Jesus was trying to, you know, feed five thousand people with with um, five um, loaves of bread. The Bible says that he prayed up on the bread, and the, the bread started to increase. So he blessed the bread right after that. So the blessing always causes increase. So that's what we, it is so important. If you must increase as a Christian or as a person, you need to stay under the blessing of God. You need to understand the blessing of God that it always will cause increase. There's, you know, before, if you look, when I look at the scripture, anything God wanted to achieve in the life of a man, he had to bless that man for them to fulfill that purpose. He blessed animals so they can multiply. He blessed um, Adam so he could, he could fulfill his purpose to replenish the earth, increase and multiply. And he blessed Noah so that he could do the same thing. He blessed Abraham so that he could achieve that purpose. Anything that God wants to accomplish in a man's life, surely he must, the blessing of God must be on that man, must be spoken about word. And the blessings and causes come through words, through a person of authority. When a person of authority has a blessing or a person that, that uh, the ultimate person is God, they're all right. Because when God speaks, he is, he is the one that has the greatest uh, the, the, the glory, he has the power, he has the honor, and when he bless the person, he releases out of him upon that person to ensure the person also enjoys of his glory. So, people with authority are the only ones that can bless and they can cause. Uh, and that's why we, the Bible says that the blessed, the, the best thing about the blesses is more is always higher than the, whoever is blessing. You cannot, you can give what you don't have. If you only have a blessing in your life, that way you can release the blessing on all that. So that's what we understand. So the other thing, the blessing calls replenishing. Replenishing means restoration. The ple- no matter what you've lost, when you have a blessing in your life, you get it restored back. Whereas the what the cost does is lack. You you rather have nothing. So the, the cost is always reduces something to zero before death. That's what the cost does. But the blessing will always cause restoration and it does not allow loss. Because you know, God is going to ensure what he gives you is protected. That's why the Bible says the blessing of God make it rich and added no sorrow. You can have blessings in this world, but it can be sorrows. Because there will be leakages. Maybe you have, you've worked all your life, you have all the money, but your health is now becomes a challenge. Or you have any money, then an accident happens and you lose your life. So I don't, that's not your approach, and I don't pray for you. But the blessing, when God blesses you, we will protect you to make sure that you enjoy the blessings He has given you. Do you know that God's the blessing we see is some subdue. So when you have power, um, when you have the blessing in your life, you can overcome. You can have victories. The blessing will always give you victory. See, the people of the Israelites went to war, and there was an accursed thing in their in their camp. And, and as, in, as in Joshua chapter 6 and, and 7, and the Bible said they could not defeat their enemies. So the cause always bring defeat, but the blessings will bring you to victory. 
That's what they need the dominion. Dominion is out of control. The world is out of control because there is a ravaging Satan. But the church has been given dominion to take authority over the, the, the powers of Satan, he said. And that's why we have to understand dominion is restored through Jesus Christ. And that's why uh, when I read the blessing, you, uh, talk about how the blessing came on Christians, on the church, or came through Jesus Christ, you just see that we have dominion, we have everything that we need as Christian through Jesus Christ. So that's one of the attributes of blessing again. The one, another attribute of blessing is that it gives rest, it gives peace. The Bible says God bless, after I had walked, God blessed the seventh day in, in Genesis 2 verse 3. So he blessed seventh day because it was a day of rest. So the blessing always brings rest on all sides. When the blessing is in your life, you have rest. You don't have wars, you don't have turmoil. But the Bible says, to the, when they um, the, the, the had seen, they had, they had, the cost came in, the Bible says, out of pain, and, they told, first of all, the man out of pain, you bear for the child. The Bible talks about, in sorrow, of your, and in sorrow shall you, you know, reap whatever you sow. The Bible talks about having the woman, should men having an enmity between Satan. So there's war, there's turmoil, there's lack of peace when there is um, a cause in the life of persons. So when you don't have peace, you, because the, the kingdom of God is joy, uh, righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Spirit. So if you are, if you don't have peace in your life, you have to turmoil, one battle to another. Certainly, there must be a cause coming from somewhere. Somebody is enacting a cause upon you. Someone is tearing up trouble from anywhere because God's blessings will bring, surely bring peace. And I pray that whatever battle you are facing in life, God brings peace as you understand the scripture and you walk in the light of this truth in Jesus' name. So the other thing that we, I, I mentioned before that you know, when Adam and his sin, they lost the glory of God. But the attribute of the blessing is that it gives glory and honor because that's God. God is full with glory and honor. All honor, glory belong to God. So we have to understand that you know, when there is shame, reproach, because Adam were living in shame, they were living in reproach, they were running from God, they were saw themselves naked because sin had come in. They've lost the glory of God. But now that glory has been restored through Jesus Christ. That's, as I read before, I want to just read Galatians chapter 3. I've said it before, but I just want us to just see what the scripture says in Galatians chapter 3. It says in verse 13, Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law, being made a cause for us. For it's written, cause the one that hangs on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So the blessing of God comes through what Jesus Christ. Jesus paid the price to take away the cost, then that we might receive the blessing through faith faith in what he did on the cross of Calvary. So when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are a partaker of God's blessing. Look at what the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. It says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So we have access to all the blessings of God in Christ Jesus. It's reserved for us in heaven. We can tap into it because it's ours. As Christians, when you get born again, you have the access to the blessing through faith. And faith is not just speaking because, you see, through disobedience, cause came. Adam and Eve disobeyed God and cause came. Now, it is through obedience of faith that we inherit the, or see the manifesto of blessing because it was Abraham was blessed, but we see that in scriptures, it's when he sacrificed his son. I get tried to sacrifice his son by obeying the voice of God. And the Bible says uh, that God said, Because you have obeyed my voice, in surely in blessing will I bless you. So we have to understand that's when it was ratified. So we are blessed as Christians, but the manifestation of the blessings comes from our obeying the instruction of God. Through faith, it cannot you cannot change that. That God does not change when faith is when you and you got if you are defining faith. First of all, you believe what God has said. You believe that God has said, I have blessed you. 
that if you believe, then the next thing is to follow the instructions of your belief. Follow the instructions of what God said will make you in heaven. Because if you believe God, but the Bible says, anyone that has come to God must first believe that He is. That means He is God, and whatever I say is real. And God is a diligent a reward of them that diligently seek Him. So if you say you believe God, you will seek Him, you follow Him. Because that's how you enjoy the blessing. It's through your obedience of faith that you enjoy the blessing. Because faith is not just believing in God. Faith is exercising your belief through actions. That you believe God and you have turned your faith to actions. God said to Abraham, leave your father's house and go to where I will show you. And he left. And the Bible says, God said he will make him father of all, uh, many nations. And he had not yet seen nature, and he did not have a child yet. But God had already promised, and he believed, and he walked according to God's word. So it was God's word that took him uh, uh, to a place where he could manifest the blessing. So you are blessed as a Christian when you are born again. You have asked God to come to your life as your Lord and Savior. But you manifest the blessing through obedience to God. That's why you need to, you know, what God, you know what, that's why Jesus came to die for you, to I can have asked to God, to I can have hear the voice of God, to I can obey whatever it tells you. That's why I encourage you as a Christian, if you're not born again, be born uh, again. If, if you're a person that has never said, Jesus, forgive my sins, come to my life, my Lord and Savior, do that today, to where you can have access to the voice of God, which is more, your most valuable asset as a person. Because if you hear the voice of God and say, do this and you do what he tells you, then you shall eat the good of the land. Then you shall manifest the blessings of God. That's what you must understand. Because if you look at the Proverbs 28, it, it says that if you, ble- if you, if you diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, then shall the blessings come upon you. He started naming all the blessings that is possible. And you can read through it, and it says in verse 15, but if you refuse to obey the voice of God, then this cause shall be before you and shall overtake you. So curses can come upon someone and can overtake you if you continually disobey the voice of God. So I encourage you today, if you never give your life to Christ, Roman said, like, if you believe Jesus died and rose again, then you confess your mouth, you shall be saved. So you, that's how it all starts. So say this and God will bring in the blessing to your life. So say, dear, dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died and you rose again for me. Forgive my sins and come to my life. I confess Jesus as my Lord and my personal Savior in Jesus' name. Amen. If you said that prayer, I believe you are a child of God. So write us, let us know what has happened to you. But number, most of all know that you are a blessed person and you have the Spirit of God restored to you. So you can carry the blessing in your spirit. You can have access to the, the, all the spiritual blessings of God in heavenly places. You can assess it now that you have a spirit. But only spirits are, can assess the kingdom of God. The Bible says, anyone that has not the spirit of God is none of it. So the, it takes the spirit of God in you now that you are born again. Because what, when you have said this prayer, you have asked God to give you and restore back the spirit that was lost through Adam. So the spirit of Christ is given to you because that Jesus is the one that paid for your life and it's his life we're now using to live the Christian race. But now what you that you are born again, as I said, you need to now start trying to develop a relationship with God. So read your Bible, pray, try to see what you know God is telling you through the Bible, scriptures to not do and to do. And when you do what it tells you to do, you will find out you will enter your promised land and you will see the blessing of God come upon your life. Evil shall be far from you. But I pray for as many of you that are still struggling with the cause in one way or the other. By the authority in Jesus' name, that cause is broken right now. In the name of Jesus, I command every spirit attached to that cause to live your life right now in Jesus' name. Be free in the name of Jesus. I set you free in your body from every infirmity. I set you free from your mind from every torment of darkness. And I set you free from every your, every demonic spirit. Anyone possessed with the spirit of the divination spirit of darkness that's, that's making you do evil. I command that spirit to go right now. It's right over you. It's broken in the name of Jesus. Be thou free in Jesus' name. Because either someone says free, is free indeed. You are free indeed. And I know that 
There will be testimonies. So write us and let us know what God has done for you. We we'll share your testimonies and we judge you and keep praying for you. So know that you know that we talk about this, this spiritual and uh, this series, and I believe you know we now understand what the spiritual realm is. The spiritual realm is a real realm, and that's where we should really live as Christians. We should not focus on the physical things. We should not think that the battles that are coming to our lives are physical. If we pray for things of the spirit, in the spiritual realm, the physical will align. You might have had a dream before and you see the reality of that will come. You never prayed about it, that's why. Maybe it's a bad dream or, or maybe it's a good dream. You see that the physical will align with the spiritual. So be a victor first in your spirit and you will see that you manifest in the physical. That's where it first takes place. So understand this if you don't understand any other thing. So it's like come your way next time. Know that God loves you and He's coming very soon. Take it. That's a one from God. So God bless you. Thank you.